We're with Mr. Dennis Milhone. Uh, Dennis, you are from Maryland, but you're up here for a pretty special reason. We understand there's a new system here that's being installed. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about it. Okay, this is the, this is a Galaxy system. It's actually from Europe. It, it came from Holland, was manu started manufacturing in Holland in the 1990s, first installed in 1999 in Europe. And now this particular system that we have here is in over 30 countries all over the world. Um, thousands of these systems out. We first brought it to the U.S. five years ago. We introduced it. Uh, we had to go through uh, quite a rigorous uh, work on it for FDA, so, so it would be PMO compliant and it would be approved. And so now we have these systems in over 13, 14 states in the United, in, here in the United States now operating. What is the significance of installing it here at the Troyer Farms? Now this this machine is uh, is a little bit different. It has a, it has a factory arm on it. Actually, it's a Mo, it's a motor man arm, and so it comes right out of a, out of a factory. And we've taken that arm and we've designed it to milk cows. So so we took a factory manufacturing arm. We gave it two eyes. We gave it a hand, and we taught it how to milk cows. And that's what we see here at the Troyer Farm. They have uh, they have a manufacturing arm that will milk two cows almost just like a human would put the milker units on. How long have you had it in place here? Uh, how, how brand new is this? We started milking in the middle of October. Uh, so what, this is the middle of July. Yeah, the first month was a little awkward. We were in the barn 24 hours a day for a month. But since then, things have gradually gotten better. Easier on the cow, it's easier on us. Why is this such a big deal for the, the farm to have this installed? Well, it, it brings an efficiency to the farm that they didn't have. You know, we got dependable help with the, with the robot as compared to, it's always been a struggle to find good help to milk your cows. So you know it's done on a timely basis and it's done the same every day. So this is a kind of a technology that actually frees up some time. Uh, it's actually a labor saving device. Uh, I imagine there's some other advantages as well. Uh, it, it, exactly. It, it frees up the owner's time so that he can do more productive things, making hay, planting corn. It also increases the production of the cow because now instead of getting milked only two or three times a day, she can be milked as many as four or five times a day. She can come in and get milked, reducing that utter pressure that high-producing cows feel that utter pressure. She can reduce that utter pressure, makes her give more milk. So it's, it's more production more profit for the owner and it's time savings, labor savings for the owner. The calf feeder saves me a lot of time. Um, we put the calves on there at four or five days and um, then I don't have to hand feed them a bottle. They go right to it, eat four times a day. So. Does the farmer have to be, a, be technologically savvy to run this or is this something that is kind of a set and forget kind of thing? Well, it depends on the age of the dairyman. Uh, the younger uh, generation that are on the farm seem to grasp the technology a lot faster than our older generation. But it, it's a user-friendly piece of equipment. It's there to give you all the information you need to best take care of your cows. What was it that drove you to take a look at the system in the first place and to install it? How did you, uh, how did you come across this? Well, our, our previous milking equipment was... Uh, getting wore out. I mean, the parlor was built in 1967. We had updated the milking equipment in the parlor several times, but uh, the parlor stalls were, they were wore out and we knew we had to do something different. So we started looking at parlors. Um, They're not cheap. Saw a used parlor for sale, went to look at it, and the reason it was for sale is the fella had installed robotic milkers. When we left that farm, my son looked at me and said, Dad, why are we looking at parlors? We quit looking at parlors and started looking at robotic milkers. Were there challenges in getting this installed? Well, this is our second um, installation, but uh, Dave and, and our techni technician, John, have been to school, um, so they are the main installers for this. But um, Of course, every farm is different, too, and there were challenges that we had to overcome, but uh, it's a team effort. They did an awesome job. I mean, I think everyone put this thing together and it's working great. And Mary, what is your role here today? What, uh, how, how do you fit into this puzzle? I'm 
I'm strictly the numbers girl, I always say. I really don't understand the equipment, but I've certainly learned a lot as it's been installed and as we've sold more and more of it. So, um, but I, I really, I'm not the technological end, end of it at all, but I do see people very, very happy with them once they're installed and that they're, you know, it's everything's running smoothly. It's quite interesting, so. This is a fairly reliable system, I understand it to be. Uh, is it sort of a set and forget system for the owner as well? Well, unfortunately, it's not a set and forget system. <laughs> not quite, not quite that that reliable. But it is the most reliable manufacturing arm on the market today. There's over 400,000, 400,000 of these arms in use worldwide. So they're designed for manufacturing, where you have an assembly line that's operating 24/7, and it's very expensive if that assembly line stops because the, the arm is broken down or it's down for maintenance. So it's a very, very reliable arm that is very low maintenance and it's gonna last, and this application is gonna last 15 or 20 years. What you're seeing now is the robot is prepping the cow. She is eating grain, which content, keeps her content. And <clears throat> can you it'll prep the cow. It does the back two quarters first. And then the front too. And it attaches the beaker. It's attached. Once all four beakers are attached, the arm moves around to its rest position as long as there's not another cow in the in the box next to us. Now that'll come around to a, it's going to sanitize the prep tool. It does that between each cow. And now it'll, it goes into the rest position. You can see the milk starting to flow through the milk tubes and it's collected in a receiver which is inside the main box and from there it's pumped to the bulk tank in the milk house. What's nice about this, this cow will be milked 24-7, seven days a week, the same way every time. What happens when you have humans involved is you know you, you don't feel the same every day so when you come in and you go to milk your cows, you might feel sluggish, so you milk slow, or you might milk them fast. With a robot milking, it was, uh, it's the same every day. So it's consistency for the cow. She gets a proper gain. She gets uh, milked out properly. So she's a little more comfortable and content. Once a cow's udder has four quarters, and each quarter holds a little bit more milk than the other. If she kicks or pulls one off, it will retract. There's another cow had just come into the, pre in the box next to it. Cows have access to the robot all day except the two cleaning periods when they flush and clean everything. As you can see, there's three beakers on the cow when there was four. One has retracted, and as, as the quarter milks out, the beaker will retract. It monitors the milk flow coming from her udder. Generally, there's more milk in the front two quarters than there are in the back two quarters. As she's done, they retract. As you can see, the left front corner is still producing milk. So it shows you that there's different quantities of milk in each quarter. What's unique about this robot is that it will milk with one arm, two boxes. So we can push 120 cows through this facility in this particular uh, setup of the double boxes. I think it's also important to remember that this arm is used in manufacturing plants all over the world. 
there's over 400,000 of these arms in use. So we took an arm that's used in manufacturing, we gave it a hand, we gave it two eyes, and we taught it how to milk cows. And so it attaches the milker unit to the cow just the same as a human being would, and just as gently as a human being would. And these cows that are coming in, they're coming in voluntarily. Even with us standing here, taking a video and talking, they're not afraid of us, they're not afraid to come in because they know that in this area here, it's very gentle, they're not gonna be hurt. They're coming in here because they wanna come in and they'll do that four or five. Some of them will try to come in even six, seven times a day, they wanna come in here. Can you tell me what we're doing? I know that they have just come out from being milked and obviously she is She's very relaxed and comfortable. Uh, probably came out to get a drink. She's just kind of hanging out, and that's what they do here. These cows just kind of hang out. They, if they get hungry, they go eat uh, grain in the robot, and as they're eating grain, they get milk, and they can come out, get a drink of water, go, go eat their forage, go lay down if they want. They're on their own schedule. It's just kind of unique. I noticed with your forage, um that it's it smelled really good so obviously you have uh, a tmr that's total yes. mixed ration that's yes. doing that actually you? with the robot in the robotic milking system they call that a pmr because it's not a true tmr some of the grain is fed in the robot oh, in a tmr all the grain is fed at the feed bunk but here some of the grain is fed through the robot so this is a partial mixed ration with uh, maybe not quite half of the grain being fed through the robotic feeder. Okay. And the robotic feeder also is tied to their milk production so that it yes. knows how much of that grain to give them. Correct. So if you notice, we use sand bedding. Yes. That's the most comfortable bedding for a cow. She's like laying on the beach all day, uh, out of the sun. <laughs> now, do you have a pad underneath the sand or is it just all sand? It's uh, called a deep, deep bedded, sand stall. Uh, there's at least eight inches of sand there. Okay. There's no concrete under that, that stall. It's dirt and then sand. Yes, we have a robotic uh, feed pusher. It runs every hour to push feed up to the cows. They, As they eat, they like to push it away. Yes, because yeah. they like to select what they want to eat. They try to. The idea of a TMR is every mouth pulls the same, but that's pretty hard. Uh, particle size is important. We actually feed baleage, um, so we have a, maybe a little bit of an issue with particle size. Uh -huh. Our baleage is uh, processed in the baler and then also in the TMR mixer. But okay. We just installed alley scrapers uh -huh. with the robotic milking system. The less that we move cattle, the better. So before we scrape with a skid loader, and to do that we had to move the cattle. Yes. So we could scrape with the alley scraper. We're not. Uh, disturbing the cattle when, when we're cleaning the barn. So how many acres are you farming at this point in time? Uh, we farm approximately 500 acres. And uh, you milk what, 250? Yes. So every odd hour it does the full barn. Every even hour it just does the front section here. Okay. We set it up that way. Most of the feed is, is delivered in the front, closer to the robot. So it must be what, one o'clock? After a little after five, one? Five after one. Yep, so it's an odd hour, it's gonna do the whole whole loop. By having this totally, with the sunlight coming down through the center and the controlledness of it all, there's really not a need to be pastured or to go out and get injured or cut because of groundhog holes or fence that heat. they break through. Right. And, and, and the heat stress. Right. Heat. And all their needs are met. They have water at their choice. They have salt at their choice. They have all their food at their choice. Now, Did I Did you know notice the cow brushes? Yes. Now, if, if, when they rub against that brush, uh, it will start turning, and they like, they like to use them. Do you um, notice that there's reduced flies with this controlled environment? The fans keep the flies out of the barn. So the there's the lack of laying because it's too greasy for them. The right. flies won't lay in here or anything because it's not conducive to their climate that right. they want. Right. That's the thing I like about the more modern day farms 
is that you don't have the issue with lies that you do with some of the generations behind. That's another problem with pasture. I don't pasture. It could be a fly issue for cattle. We have to. Well, you have that. We, we don't have to. When we used to pasture cattle before the cattle left the barn, if we didn't put fly spray on them to keep the flies off them, it, you know, you'd have issues with pink eye or all kind of fly issues. Right. Over here, we don't have to use any fly spray, none. So, you don't have to use any of the fly sprays. You, you don't have to worry about pink eye because yeah. there's no injury to the eyes right. with the uh, flies. Right. But this, I is what I like. The high ceilings, uh, it's not uh, claustrophobic at all. Even with the curtain halfway down. The other thing is you're using a lot of electricity. Now, do you have your own generators or? When there's power outage, we, we can run a generator, yes. Okay. Now, where is your bulk tank for all the milk? You haven't been there yet? No, we have not been there yet. Okay, we can visit that. So. As the cows are being milked, the milk is pumped from the robot room into the milk house here through this pre-cooler. The, the milk is chilled and, and then it travels to the bulk tank where it's uh, finished cooling down to 38 degrees. When the milkman comes to pick up the milk, the robots need to continue milking. So what he does, he can switch to buffer at that point, when he does that, the valves change, then the milk no longer goes to the bulk tank, it goes to the buffer tank. And it continues filling the buffer tank as long as the milkman is pulling the, pulling the milk out of the bulk tank. Then the tank washes and does its uh, detergent and acid rinse and final rinse washes. After it's done with that, it will automatically, this wash controller will automatically make the switch the buffer tank will drain into the bulk tank, and then as the cows are being milked, the milk will go into the bulk tank. So the robots don't have to stop milking when the bulk tank washes. The robots stop milking to wash three times a day. They wash at uh, 6.30, 10.30, I'm sorry, 6.30, 2.30, and 10.30 in the evening. And what and about Serena pads? Do you have did you change any of yes, those? we change those before every wash, and in, um, they're in the robot room. Okay. Yep, they're changed three times a day. Yep. So gone is the days of coming down and swiping a gallon of milk out of the bulk tank. That's still possible. Ah, that's yes. good to know. That's yeah. Good so to know. what we do when we want, we like to drink our own milk. We make quality milk, mm -hmm. and um, it's as fresh as it's going to get. So we do drink our own milk. All I have to do if I want to get a gallon of milk for the house is take this pipe apart here, put my milk jug here, swing this down to the milk jug, come over here and press sample. And if I open that valve, the milk will fill my gallon. milk jug. And I and close you... it and then I go back to home and I rinse that out and I close that back up. All right. And then that washes when the milkman washes the tank. Because that's still my favorite kind of milk, right yeah. all over the tank, the ball yep. tank. Now, I know that uh, in the milk prices and things, uh, you used to be paid on um, your butter fat and your protein. Still true. Still true. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the best part of this for you? What's the most fun? You know, the, the satisfaction on the customer's face. It, I, mean, I, I, I was a dairyman my whole life until 10 years ago we sold our dairy, but to make your customer happy and pleased, and they're not just a customer, but your friend, that's important to me. And Dave, how about you? What's the best part of uh, all this to you? What I liked about this is uh, right from the beginning, we sat down with everyone involved in installing this situation here, including our farmer, the banker, uh, the contractor, the plumber, the heating guy. Everyone sat down and we had periodical meetings and uh, we put things together, including our builder and our cement. Everything was kind of like uh, putting on a choreography type uh, dance. Everyone had their portion to do and we all met and we did fine. It went together good. It sounds like the interaction was really good. Yeah, it was very good. Mary, one last question for all of you and then I promise we're all done. 
Uh, I imagine you've gotten to meet a lot of folks here too. Anyone special that uh, stands out? For me, it was meeting face to face the Troyers because before this I had just spoken with them over the phone. And so to meet them and see their family is just amazing. And yeah, it's just a wonderful treat to do that. So, and mostly for me, it's the people on the phone that I talk to all the time, so. Are you aware of any other um, kinds of technology that maybe is out on the horizon that you may be interested in in the future? That's a question for him. <laughs> uh, technology, and not only in the dairy industry, but you know, in, in any industry, keeps improving, and it all comes at a price. Uh, right now, we put a lot of apples, so to speak, in this barn, but there's a lot of stuff in the field you can do with uh, technology, GPS, uh, auto steer, all that with farm equipment is coming, and it's well, it's here, um, and we can see that down the road. But at this point, for us, it's not affordable. You know, we milk cows. And we spent, you know, our money here in this barn, and down the road maybe our our children can be more uh, involved in technology in the field. Uh, at this point, you know, maybe it's best for us to hire things done in the field. People who have better equipment than we do. But uh, as far as milking cows, we feel, you know, we have the the up and coming, and, and it's here and it's uh, doing well.